So, children, today I will tell you a story of a sheep whose name was Nellie. She was very beautiful and pretty. Everyone loved her. Elephants, horses, dogs, sparrows, parrots. Everyone loved her. One day, Nellie's parents had to go out of the village for some work. But Nellie didn't want to go with them. Her mom said, Nellie, you are little now. You will go far and wander off while playing. And Fox can take you with her. Nellie said, Mom, don't worry. All of my friends are here. She didn't listen to her parents. Then her mom asked her friends to take care of her. And she asked Nellie to not go very far from the house by herself. All of her friends were busy with their chores. And Nellie went too far away while having soft and delicious grass to snack on. She didn't even realize where she was going. And suddenly, a fox came along. She saw Nellie and was tempted by the deliciousness of the little sheep. Today, I will have a lot of lamb to eat. <laughs> Fox was very happy. But if I kill her now, all of her friends would come. Then what would I do? She started talking to Nellie and pretended to be the little lamb's best friend. And she said to her, you have come so far. Aren't you afraid? And Nellie answered, Oh, yes, I came so far, I didn't even realize. My mom said, What did your mom say? My mom had said to not go anywhere by myself because the fox would come and eat you for dinner. That's what your mom said? But you didn't listen to her? Oh, don't worry. My house isn't far from here. Come, you can sit on my back. We'll go to my house. Okay. And Nellie sat on the fox's back. And then they started walking towards the fox's house. See, that's my house. You go inside and take a rest. I'll bring something for you to eat. Oh my goodness. This is your house? Boy, sure is dirty. Why don't you clean it? Uh, won't you? You're here now. You can clean it. Fine, I'll clean it. Meanwhile, please bring something for me to eat, Nellie said, and she started cleaning the house. While cleaning, she found a piece of sheep's skin. Nellie got scared. Oh no, what if this creature is a fox? I should have followed my mom's instruction. And she started crying. And suddenly, she heard a sparrow's whistle. When she looked out of the window, she found it was her friend, the little sparrow bird. Sparrow told Nellie, Don't cry. I hope you know it now that she is a fox. Now, we will do something to help you. She will not kill you that easily. You keep on talking to her like you did before. Our friend, Mr. Parrot, went to go ask everyone to come and help you. Suddenly, she stopped talking because the fox was coming back. As soon as Fox was back, she said, I have brought so much food for you. Eat this first. I have some work in the jungle, so I'll be back soon. But, friend, I thought you were supposed to bring me back to my house. Your parents aren't home. You can stay here for a few days. Let me come back from my work. Then we will decide about dinner. Okay? Okay? The fox was gone, but she had locked the door very tightly. Now Nellie was getting nervous, and she started crying. 
All she wants to decide about is when she wants dinner after she gets back. She wants to kill me. Suddenly, the sparrow whistled. All of Nellie's friends were here. The elephant was here, and he broke the door with his trunk. Soon, Nellie was out, and she could hear Mr. Horse and Mr. Dog, too. Can we go home now? Nellie asked, and everyone said, No, we can't go home just like that. First, we have to teach this fox a lesson. Then everyone gathered together and made a plan to teach the fox a lesson. Do you know what that plan was? They put sheep on top of a roof. The cat was sitting at the front door, and the dog was sitting at the back door. Mr. Horse was guarding close to the door, and Mr. Elephant was guarding near the jungle. It was getting dark. Everyone was standing in their positions, and approximately at midnight, the fox came back. Fox was very hungry. She thought she was going to gobble up Nellie. When she opened the door, she found it was too dark. There was a wood log on the door, which was about to fall. Then the fox shouted, Nellie, where are you? Why didn't you light the lamp? But Mr. Elephant had kept Nellie on the rooftop. Then Nellie answered, My friend, I'm up here. Look, I'm so scared of foxes. You don't have to be scared. I'm back. Please come down now. Nellie answered, No, please come down. Why are you behaving like a little child? Okay, okay, fine. I'll come up there. She was about to jump on the rooftop when the cat attacked her. Meow, meow. The fox got scared and she thought she would go up by the back door. She went to the back door that was being guarded by Mr. Tipu. Meow, meow. Fox was being attacked at every door. She got scared, and she opened the door and ran out. As soon as she was out, Mr. Horse was ready, too. He kicked the fox so hard that she broke her leg. She was crying in pain and started running towards the jungle. But the jungle was being guarded by Mr. Elephant. He picked the fox up and threw her so hard on a stone that she could not get up. Then Nellie sat on the elephant's trunk and everyone got back to her house happily. Elephant said, You are lucky that Sparrow and Parrot saw you. Otherwise, we could not have taught the fox a lesson. So children, what is the moral of the story? Friends should always be attentive and help each other. The Three Billy Goats Gruff Once upon a time, there were three billy goats gruff. They lived on the grassy hillside near the river. There was a little billy goat gruff. <coughs> Middle Billy Goat Gruff, meh, and Big Billy Goat Gruff, the largest of all the brothers. Meh. They loved to eat the sweet green grass all day and drink cool, fresh water from the river. The three brothers lived happily on the hillside. They ate and <coughs> ate and ate meh. all day. <coughs> <laughs> Soon, they realized that they had eaten up every last blade of the grass on the hill where they lived. <laughs> oh no! What will we eat now? cried Little Billy Goat Brother. Don't worry, Little Brother, said Middle Billy Goat Brother. 
Look on the other side of the river. There's a lush meadow over there filled with yummy grass. That's right, said Big Billy Goat Gruff. All we have to do is cross the bridge and enjoy the delicious greeny grass. But crossing the bridge was dangerous. The three Billy Goats Gruff were afraid, as they knew a big, awful, smelly troll with horrible red eyes lived underneath the bridge. He was hairy and had very big pointed teeth. (laughs) He gobbled up anyone who tried to cross the bridge. He was longing to eat those Billy Goats Gruff. He kept on waiting for the right opportunity, and it seems he will soon get one. (laughs) The three Billy Goats Gruff grew hungrier and hungrier. Who is going to cross the bridge first? Asked the big Billy Goat brother. Little Billy Goat Gruff could wait no longer, and so he stepped ahead and said, Meh, I will cross the bridge first. He took a deep breath and trotted down the hillside. Tip tap, tip tap, tip tap, his hooves made the sound on the wooden bridge. <laughs> Who's that tapping on my bridge? Growled the troll, jumping up onto the bridge. Meh, I am little Billy Goat Gruff said the little billy goat gruff, trying to sound brave. I am crossing the river to eat the sweet grass on the other side. Oh, no, you're not, roared the troll. Because I am going to chew you up. (laughs) Little billy goat gruff was very scared, but he was also very smart billy goat. He said, Oh, don't eat me, please. You see, I am the smallest of the three brothers. You won't be satisfied eating skinny little me. I won't make a very good meal, but if you eat my older brother, Middle Billy Goat, who will come along, he is much bigger and fatter than me. Oh, well, very well. You may cross the bridge, said the hungry troll, and went back underneath the bridge. The little billy goat gruff tippy-tapped the rest of the bridge into the wide meadow of the sweet green grass. On the other side of the river, the other two billy goats gruff saw that their little brother was safe in the lush green meadow. I'll go next said the middle billy goat gruff, and off he went as the eldest brother nodded to him. He too trotted down the hillside, tip-tap, 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 his hooves made the sound on the wooden bridge. (laughs) Who is that tip-tapping over my bridge? Once more, the monstrous troll jumped over the bridge. <clears throat> Meh, it is I, Middle Billy Goat Gruff. I am going over the river to join my little brother in the meadow. <laughs> no, you are not, roared the troll again. Because I am going to gobble you up. <laughs> Middle Billy Goat Gruff was also very scared, but like his younger brother, he was also very smart Billy Goat. He said, Oh, you could eat me, but you will be making a mistake. (coughs) I am also skin and bones. If you can wait a short while, you can eat my older brother, Big Billy Goat Gruff who is much bigger than I, largest among us, and would certainly make the best meal for you. Mm, Yum, yum, Mm, very well, you may cross my bridge, (laughs) Mm. 
said the greedy troll, licking his lips, and again went back underneath the bridge. The middle billy goat gruff also tippity-tapped the rest of the bridge into the wide meadow and joined his little brother. On the other side of the river, big billy goat gruff saw that both of his brothers were safe in the lush green meadow. So off he trotted down the hillside, tip-tap, tip-tap, tip-tap. His hooves made the sound on the wooden bridge. The monstrous troll jumped over the bridge for the third time. <laughs> who is that tip-tapping over my bridge? <laughs> it is I, Big Billy Goat Gruff. I am going over the river to join my younger brothers in the meadow. No! <laughs> oh, no, you are not! growled the troll again. Because I am going to eat you up, and I am very, very hungry! <laughs> but unlike his younger brothers, Big Billy Goat Gruff was not scared of the troll. He was big, as well as strong. Angrily, the large goat stomped his hooves on the bridge, lowered his big pointed horns, and charged at the troll. <laughs> he crashed into the ugly, smelly troll, and off he was thrown up into the sky and fell right into the flowing river with a great splash never to be seen again. And so, the big billy goat gruff tippity-tapped the rest of the bridge into the wide, lush meadow and joined little billy goat gruff and middle billy goat gruff. The three billy goats gruff spent rest of the day munching the sweet, greeny, yummy lissus grass and drinking cool water from the river. The End but I'm still very, very, very hungry. <laughs> I've been living under a bridge, and I get out outsmarted by goats. Oh, oh, I'm so hungry. Come on, I'm homeless. If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get future updates. And don't forget to comment! Playings of Animals Once there was a jungle. In that jungle, so many animals lived. They used to eat dinner together. A monkey thought, we never get out of this jungle. Why can't we go out of our house like people do in their cars? We'll go to a city and see beautiful places there. He shared his thoughts with all the other animals. Everyone liked this thought. But the question was, how do we share this thought with the lion? Because he was the one who would have to give permission for them to go to the city. No one wanted to go and ask him. And then the monkey said, Miss Fox is really cunning. You can go and ask him, Miss Fox. When he asked the fox, she said yes to the proposal. Next afternoon, she went to meet the lion. She saw that lion was sleeping peacefully. This made the fox comfortable. She thought of talking to the lion. And everyone knows that lions really like the news about leaving the jungle. The lion woke up and the fox told everything about the idea. Lion liked the idea, and he gave permission to everyone 
Everyone decided to meet the next day. Everyone was told to tell the lion what they would do while they were visiting the city. All the animals were supposed to bring their own lunch boxes. All of them were so eager to begin the journey. That morning, they got up very early. Miss Elephant wore her favorite black coat. The rabbit wore his white shirt. The deer got a nice golden bindi. They made a group of three animals and started their journey. The troop was led by fox and monkey. After a while, they reached the city. Oh no, something was wrong. When people saw them, all of them ran and hid in their houses. And they were peeping through their windows. All the fruit vendors left their belongings on the road and just ran away. Those fresh fruits and vegetables were very tempting to all the animals from the jungle. But they didn't eat it. What if the lion gets angry? And they just started walking. Finally, they reached a garden. Again, all roadside vendors ran away from the wild animals. Elephant took one cart with her to the garden. Now all of them were starving. They got ready to eat the lunches they had brought. Rabbit had brought radish and cucumber. Lion had brought some meat. Elephant had brought lots of sugar cane. All of them ate a lot of food. They were sitting below a tree, and a photographer was sitting on the tree itself. He slowly came in front of them and took a very nice picture. Then all of them met local animals from the garden. There they saw a beautiful train and all of them sat in the train. But when the driver saw them, he ran out of the train in fear. Then the bear rode the train. They had a very pleasant ride. Then they played other games too. They played on the swings. But Elephant was too heavy so he could not enjoy the swing. Overall, their outing to the city was amazing. And then they headed back to the jungle and decided to come back to the city every year. The End Three Brave Soldiers they had fought so many battles for their kingdom and had won victory. But after battle, the king didn't give them any awards and threw them out of the kingdom for no reason at all. Those soldiers had to roam for a very long time to find a place to stay. And finally, they reached a jungle. The jungle was too dark to see anything. All three of them decided that one by one, all of them would guard the other two. Then, two soldiers went to sleep, and one of them collected some wood to start a bonfire. He was about to stir, and suddenly, a dwarf came out of the fire and stood right in front of him. He was wearing a red jacket, and his head was covered with a red scarf. He asked the soldier, Who are you? I am a poor soldier. Please sit with me. I would love to talk to you. And then the soldier told him his story. The dwarf felt very bad for him, listening to his story. The dwarf said not to worry. Have this coat. It can cover you from top to bottom. That coat was not so clean, so the soldier smiled. But the dwarf whispered something in the soldier's ear, and the soldier just kept looking at the coat. Stunned, he turned back to thank the dwarf 
But by that time, the dwarf was already gone. It was already morning. And then the soldier told his friends the story of the strange little dwarf and showed him the coat. They both reacted and said the coat was so dirty and very strange. But the first soldier said it very proudly to his friends that this was not an ordinary coat. If I wear this, all my wishes will come true. Both of the soldiers were astonished. The other soldier also shared his encounter when he was guarding them that he also met a dwarf who gifted him with a magical wallet. This wallet has so many gold coins that it doesn't matter how much you spend, it will never be empty. Then the third soldier also told his story. He showed them a musical instrument. This instrument is so magical that anyone listening to it will get mesmerized with the music completely and they will sing and dance to the music. They were very happy to get these amazing gifts from the dwarf. Then the first soldier thought these should be tested. So he wore the coat and asked for his wishes. On my dear coat, we don't have a place to live. Please get us a big and beautiful palace. And then there was a thunderstorm, a huge noise. And suddenly there was a big palace in front of them. There was a beautiful garden, and on the gate, four to five beautiful horses with a golden chariot. All three of them sat on the chariot and stared at the nearby kingdom. And suddenly, they found something. Their chariot parked right in front of a king's palace. The king was informed about their arrival and welcomed them happily. The men were so charming that the king asked them to stay in the palace for a couple of days. The king thought they were definitely prince of some distant kingdom and that maybe he could get his daughter married to one of them. One fine evening, one of the soldiers was walking in the garden with the princess and suddenly she noticed the wallet and very happily asked, where did he get the wallet from? He didn't hide anything from her and told her the story of how the dwarf gave it to him one night. He was very unwise to tell her this story because the next day the princess mixed some sleeping pills in his drink and once he was sleeping she replaced his wallet with a wallet that was not magical. After some days he realized the princess had cheated him and had stolen his wallet. All three of them got very angry. The soldier with the coat said she should be taught a lesson. He wore the coat and said, Oh, my magical coat, please take me to the princess's palace. There the princess was, counting gold coins. When she looked up, there was the soldier in the magical coat standing in front of her. Thief! Thief! The soldier got scared. He jumped from the window, and while coming down, his coat got tangled in the tree. Poor soldier. Now it was the third soldier's turn. He played his instrument and got a big army which surrounded the whole palace. Then he sent a messenger to the king. He told him everything and asked for the coat and the wallet. But the cunning princess asked for two days' time. How many days? Two days. The princess disguised herself as a servant and went to investigate the soldier's camp. She had a lot of things to eat with her. She went near their camp and started singing very nicely. Slowly but surely, all the soldiers came out and started listening to her. Then she asked her servant to get that instrument, and she did. 
and then both of them came back to the palace. She was so happy. The poor soldiers were homeless again. One of the soldiers said, Let's get separated, and then let's see what happens. Then all three of them got separated. The soldier with the wallet walked a very long distance, and when he got tired, he sat down below a tree. It was an apple tree. He took an apple and started eating it, but he was so hungry. He plucked another one and started eating. He was about to eat a third apple too, but then he started feeling dizzy. Oh, what's happening to me? His nose was getting longer and longer so that he couldn't see the end of his face. Since he was so dizzy, he slept. The other soldiers were also walking and then hit something. Oh, what is this? It looks like this is someone's nose. They started walking in the direction of the nose. And when they reached the end, they were astonished. They were so sad to see the condition of their poor friend. And then suddenly, that strange little dwarf appeared in front of them. My friends, don't worry. If he will eat fruit from that tree, then his nose will come back to its previous state. And you shouldn't take this fruit to the princess. You should teach her a lesson. Now, the soldier tried that apple, disguised himself as a gardener, and arrived at the princess's palace. She saw the fresh red apple, and she became very happy. She had two apples to eat right then. Once she had eaten the third apple, her nose started growing big and longer and so long that it reached the garden, and it was still growing. The king became frightened and spread the news in his kingdom. Whoever will cure my daughter, I will give them a large reward. The next day, both soldiers disguised themselves and mixed apple juice in medicine and gave it to the princess. Then her nose started growing more and more. The next day, she was given medicine with juice from other fruit. Finally, her nose started going back to its original size. But then, they thought of teaching the princess a lesson. So, they gave her medicine with red apple juice. The princess got scared. Now her nose was getting longer and longer again. Princess, I think you have stolen someone's things. I know magic and I can read that. If you do not return those things, then you will stay in this condition forever. But the princess was by no means ready to return things she had stolen. Okay, whatever you want. The king tried to convince her. You should return those items. Now princess has understood as well. She was so fed up of that long nose. She returned all the items she had stolen from the soldiers. Then he fed the other fruit juice to the princess, who wore the jacket and went back to his friends. And then all three of them lived happily ever after in their palace. The End If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get future updates. And don't forget to comment! The Magic Porridge Pot Once upon a time, there was a sweet little girl named Melody. She lived with her mother in a small cottage. They were very, very poor, but Melody tried to make her mother happy by singing songs to her. Every day, Melody used to go into the woods to find something to eat. She used to bring back whatever she could find, but their bellies were never full. One day, saddened with their poverty, Melody left the house and went into the woods looking for something to eat. No matter how hard she searched,
there was nothing to be found. Finally, Melody could bear it no more. She sat on a rock and started to cry. While crying, she sang a sad song in her sweet, melodious voice. Hearing her voice, a forest fairy appeared in front of her and said, What happened, my child? Why are you crying? And what are you doing alone in the woods? I am here to find something to eat for me and my mother. We are very poor and very hungry, said Melody with grief on her face. Don't worry, the fairy said. And with her magical wand, she changed a pebble into a big magical pot. Melody was amazed to see the magic. Take this pot home, and your family shall never be hungry again. I don't want to be rude, but what good is an empty pot if there's no food in it to cook? Melody said in a disheartening voice, to which the fairy answered, This is a magical pot. When you want something to eat, say, Cook, pot, cook. And when it's ready, say, Stop, pot, stop. <sighs> Melody was delighted with the gift she got from the fairy. And, with due respect, she asked the fairy, Oh, dear fairy godmother, I don't have enough words to thank you. Please, tell me what I can do for you in return. I don't want anything in return. But if you want, you can sing me a beautiful song every day. Before Melody could ask any more questions, the forest fairy disappeared. When Melody arrived home with nothing but an empty pot, her mother was very unhappy and said, What use is the pot if you have nothing to cook in it? Melody lifted the pot to the table and simply said, Cook, pot, cook. Nothing happened. Melody looked worried, but then the pot started to shake and hissed. The steam rose and up bubbled the creamiest porridge they had ever seen. Melody's mother understood that the pot was magical. She was so hungry Yummy. that she could mm. not resist the creamy mm. porridge, oh, it's and delicious. she licked it with her finger. She was overwhelmed with the taste of the porridge so much that she did not pay attention to Melody's other command. Stop, pot, stop! They ate and ate until the pot was empty and their stomachs were full. Melody's mother rubbed her stomach happily. Melody then thought, Oh, it's time for me to go and sing a song for the forest fairy. So she left the house and went into the woods again. Here at home, <laughs> her mother was so happy Ta -ta. that they would never have to worry about the food again. She collected all the old pots in which she used to cook <laughs> and threw them away bye bye. to make space See for you the later. new one. Or not. She polished and patted the new pot. All this hard work made her hungry again. Cook, pot, cook, she commanded. And presto, from inside the pot, more delicious <laughs> porridge bubbled up. Not even bothering to get the bowl, she ate directly from the pot. Mmm, delicious! But as quickly as she ate, the pot kept filling up until it was set to bubble up right over the edge. Oh dear, how did Melody make the pot stop? Enough pot, enough! But the pot bubbled on. It's plenty, Pot. It's plenty. The porridge 
steamed over the edge onto the table. Really, that will do. The porridge pours over the floor. Melody's mother starts to panic. Cease! Uh, finish! No more! She commanded. Soon, she realized that she had made a great mistake and ran away. The porridge poured out from the doors and windows onto the streets, bubbling and forming a great wave and rolled through the village. People gathered up on their rooftops and started to call for help. Melody heard the villagers calling out in distress. She raced down the woods towards the village. She took a wooden plank and a stick and rode towards her house. When she reached just outside her house, she shouted, Stop, pot, stop! And that is just what the pot did. As the bubbling subsided, Melody saw that all the villagers were reaching down and lifting a handful of creamy porridge to their mouth. The whole village enjoyed the porridge. They ate and ate and ate the whole winter long. And no one in the village was hungry ever again. The end. If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get future updates. And don't forget to comment. Good deeds always pay. Hundred years ago in Rome, there used to live a slave. His name was Andro Klege. His boss was very cruel. He used to give his slave lots of work, like cutting wood, getting water, working all the time. If he made any mistake, then his boss would beat him up a lot. One day, he was beaten for some small mistake he made. He was beaten so much, he started crying, and then he ran away. His boss could not figure out where he had run off to. After a while, he reached a jungle, and for some days, he lived in a cave. He used to go out in the daytime to eat fruit and drink water from the river. This was his new life, and that is how many days passed. One day, he came out of the cave to gather some fruit. As soon as he was back in his cave, he found someone there. He found out it was a lion. That lion was in so much pain, he could only use one of his legs. And he seemed to be hurting so very much. When the slave looked closely, he found that a thorn had gotten stuck in the poor lion's leg. He got close to the lion. He took the lion's leg in his hand and very slowly pulled out the thorn. He used some bandages. Now the lion was feeling better. After two or three days, the lion's leg healed. Then one day, the lion left the cave. Andro felt very good. Many days had passed and he became bored. He was wondering what he should do. Where should he go? So he decided to visit a different city. So he left the cave and reached a city. But his bad luck was following him. That very same day, his cruel master had also come to the city. As soon as he saw Andro, he shouted to nearby soldiers to arrest him. His army men put Andro in jail. That time in Rome, there was a rule that captivated criminals are fed to the lions. For a couple of days, he was in prison. And after some time, he was put in front of a lion. There were so many people to see, including the king of Rome. Then 
the cage was opened. And Andro had one tiny knife with him to protect himself against the lion. When the lion saw Andro, it roared very loudly. It was about to attack Andro, when suddenly the roaring lion realized that he had seen this man somewhere. When it looked closely, it realized that this was the same man who helped him. The lion bowed in front of Andro and started licking Andro's feet. The people were astonished, and so was the king. Actually, Andro was also astonished that instead of getting eaten, why, this lion was licking his feet. When he looked closely, Andro realized that this was the same lion that he had helped once. He sat down and started to pet him. The king did not understand. What was he supposed to do now? He asked his guards to get the lion back in the cage and bring that slave to me. They brought the slave to the king. The king asked him, How is it that the lion did not kill or eat you? Then Andro told the king that a couple of weeks ago, he had pulled a thorn out of the foot of the lion. And that is why the lion didn't kill him. The king asked him, Why weren't you scared while you were helping the lion? Then Andrew said, Why would I be afraid? This lion can't be as mean as my master was. After listening to this, the king was so touched, and he appreciated Andro, that the king declared from now on, Andro would no longer be anyone's slave. Andro received a large reward, and then his cruel master was arrested and sentenced to two years in prison. So, my friends, the moral of the story is, treat others as you would want to be treated, with kindness and helpfulness. Long time ago, a woodcutter lived in a tiny cottage next to a deep forest with his two children, Hansel and Gretel. Hansel was a smart and clever boy and Gretel was a shy and timid girl. His second wife often ill-treated the children and was forever nagging the woodcutter. There is not enough food in the house for us all. There are too many mouths to feed. We must get rid of the two brats or we will all starve to death. She declared. The woodcutter opposed the wife's evil plan, but she wouldn't listen to him. Poor Hansel and Gretel had overheard the conversation and were left crying all night. One day, father had to go to the town to earn money for the family's living. The evil stepmother got a chance to take little children in the forest and leave them all by themselves. Next morning, the stepmother calls out for Hansel and Gretel and says cheerfully, Get ready, my children. Let's go for a picnic. She tries to be as kind as possible so that the children do not come to know of her plans. She packs a bag with some bread and cookies and hands it over to Gretel and says, Hold this sweet little Gretel. We shall have this food in the forest. She merrily locks the house and they start walking towards the forest. Hansel was a stone collector. He had a huge collection of white pebbles which he carried everywhere. Stealthily, Hansel laid a trail of white pebbles thinking. Mm, we can follow these pebbles back home. For him, it was just a part of a game. He was unaware of his stepmother's plan. But she noticed the white pebbles that Hansel was dropping by, but she remained quiet. As they reached deep in the forest, the stepmother said, 
This looks like a good spot for picnic. You both can take a nap here while I go and get some fresh fruits for you too. She left them all alone. Hansel and Gretel sat below a big tree and ate some cookies and played some games. Time passed by and it was almost evening. Gretel started to get worried that their mother was not back yet to get them. Since the stepmother had seen Hansel dropping the pebbles all the way till where she left them, she knew the children were smart enough to follow the pebbles back home. So, on her way back, she collected the white pebbles that Hansel had dropped and made a similar trail of the pebbles towards an unused path which led elsewhere. Gretel was scared, so Hansel told her, Let's wait for the nightfall. I dropped a trail of white pebbles all the way here. So with the moonlight shining on them, we could get back home. When the night fell, the horrible sound of all the wild animals started to echo around them. They were scared, but they waited till the moon rise and they were happy to see their white pebbles shining in the moonlight and started to follow the trail which they thought they had laid cleverly, unaware that the stepmother had changed the path. Now give me your hand. We'll get back home safely. You'll see. Hansel said with immense confidence. Soon, they were tired of walking and they were nowhere close to their house. They decided to sit at the foot of a tree as there were many fireflies making light and dancing. They gazed at the moon and the fireflies and soon fell asleep. The night went by and in the morning they got up from their sleep. They saw a magnificent and beautiful butterfly. It was full of colors. They looked at each other and smiled with happiness. For a moment they forgot they were lost and hungry and followed the butterfly and tried to play with it. And within no time, they reached towards a funny looking house. They were astonished to see the house was made of chocolates, candies, gems and cake. They had never seen such a house before. They were so happy and could not resist having those delicious sweets. This is like a drama land. When they were done, they saw the door of the house and decided to go inside expecting lot more to eat and play. As they go inside, the door slams and they see a beautiful lady cooking supper. They greet her with happiness as she looks so kind and generous. Good, Good afternoon, my dear, dear lady. Hansel and Gretel say to her, we have lost our way back home. Would you be kind enough to help us find our way back? The lady looks at them with enough kindness and nods her head. Yes, of course, my children. I shall surely help you. But be my guest and stay with me for a few days. I stay alone and would like to enjoy your company. The children were really happy. She cooked delicious food for them and served them with whatever they could think of. You both are very lean and slim. I'll feed you and make you healthy. She said smiling. A few days passed and one night Gretel got up of her sleep at midnight. As she got up, she heard of some whisper. She started walking towards the sound and saw that the beautiful lady was actually a cruel witch who was planning and plotting to kill the children and eat them up. She was serving them delicious food to make them healthy so that she could relish the meal. The witch did not know that Gretel had seen her and Gretel was shivering to the core of her heart. Next morning, when the children woke up, they found that things were different. There was no food on the table and no delicacies for them to have. 
Gretel had still not told Hansel of what she saw last night. And as she decides to tell him, the lady who was actually a witch came and with enough love told the children that there was not enough food in the house to cook and so she could not cook any meal for them. Lady asked Hansel, Dear son, would you please get me some wood from the nearby forest so that I can cook a meal for all of us. Meanwhile, me and Gretel will do the preparations. Hansel agreed quickly. She handed him an axe and he left the house happily. Gretel knew something was not right and was very scared, but she kept on doing what the lady told her so as not to alarm her. As Hansel was going towards the forest, he saw at the back of the house there were piles of logs stacked. He was a clever boy and at once he felt that something was wrong. He tried to peep into the window and suddenly saw the actual witch who had by now shown her actual self to Gretel. Hansel did not make any noise and was very careful that the witch may not feel his presence. Hansel was planning fast as what can be done and how he can protect his dear sister. Meanwhile, he heard the cruel witch telling Gretel, Go to the kitchen and start the oven. Gretel had no choice than to do what witch told her. Sometime later, the witch told Gretel, Go and check if the oven was properly lit. Gretel told the witch. I don't know how to check. Can you show me how to check it so that I can do it later? The witch felt how stupid Gretel was. Come on girl, I'll show you. She said. Hansel, who was observing everything from outside, thought this was his only chance. As the witch started to walk towards the oven, he came from behind stealthily and as the witch bent down to check in the oven, Hansel ran towards her and pushed her in the oven and Gretel efficiently and quickly closed the oven door and locked it. The evil bitch burnt into a crisp. Hansel and Gretel hugged each other. They both could not believe what happened and that they were safe now. They went to the witch's room and were surprised to see how much wealth and precious gems she owned. They filled all they could in their bag and left the house quickly and ran till they eventually reached their house. They saw their father sitting out in the porch. He looked so miserable and sad. They quickly ran towards him and they all kissed and hugged each other. Children told father all they had experienced. Father was really angry and told his nagging wife to leave them alone. As she goes, the children show the gems and wealth they collected from the evil witch's treasure. Finally, they could live a carefree life and lived together happily. On a farm long ago, a mama duck sat on her nest. Mama duck must keep her eggs warm till they hatch. At last, the eggs began to crack. One by one, yellow ducklings stepped out of their shells. They shook their wings and said, Quack, quack! Look at all of you! said Mama Duck with joy. You are all so cute! Quack, quack! Mama Duck said, Come and line up. We will go down the lake for your first swim. She counted, one, two, three, four, five. Oh dear, she said, I should have six ducklings. But one large egg was still in the nest. Well, said Mama Duck, It looks like that the big egg will take more time. 
so she had to go sit on her nest again and wait some more. The next day, the pig egg started to hatch. Out came a baby boy bird, but if one may say so, it was an odd-looking thing. This bird was much bigger than others. He was not yellow at all. He was dark gray from his head to his feet, and he walked with a funny wobble. One of the yellow ducklings pointed. What is that? He cannot be one of us. I've never seen such an ugly duckling," said another. "How can you say such a thing?" said Mama Duck in a stern voice. "You are only one day old. Your brother hatched from the very same nest as you did. Now line up. We will go to the lake for your very first swim." Yet the other ducklings quacked. Ugly, ugly, ugly. The ugly duckling did not know why the other ducklings were yelling at him. He took the last spot in the line. Each yellow duck jumped in the river and swam behind Mama Duck. When it was his turn, the ugly duckling jumped in and started to paddle too. At least he can swim. Mama Duck said to herself, when they left the water and started to play, the ugly duckling tried to play with his brothers and sisters too. They yelled, "Go away! We'll not play with you. You are ugly, and you walk weird too." You know what? You would do us a big favor if you just went away from here. All of them started to quack. Get, get out! Get, get out, out! Get, get out! out! Why don't they let me stay here? That night, the ugly duckling flew over the farmyard fence. He flew till he landed on the other side of the lake. There he met two grown-up ducks. "Can I please stay here for a while?" said the ugly duckling. "I have nowhere else to be." "What do we care?" said one of the ducks. "Just don't get in our way." Woof! Woof! Suddenly, a big hungry dog came tearing by. Chasing the two ducks, they quickly flew up in the air, and their feathers fell down on the ground. The poor ugly duckling froze in fear. The dog sniffed and sniffed at the ugly duckling, then turned away. I'm too ugly even for the big hungry dog to want," said the ugly duckling with his head hung low. The sky turned dark. Crack! A bolt of lightning. Then came a big storm, with heavy rains pouring down from the sky. In just moments, the ugly duckling was soaked through and through. Then a cold wind started to blow. Brrr. He said, with both wings held close to his chest. If only there was a place I could get dry. All at once, a tiny light blinked far off in the woods. Could it be someone's hut? He flew to the door. Quack quack! Said the ugly duckling. The door of the hut creaked open. What is all this noise? Said an old woman, looking right and left. Her eyes were not that good. Then she looked down. Ah! Look at that! It's a duck. She picked up the ugly duckling and dropped him inside her hut. You can stay here, but only if you lay eggs. She said. A tomcat and hen crept up to the ugly duckling. Who do you think you are, coming in here and taking up the room by the fire? Said the tomcat. <coughs> said the hen. I do not need anyone else in this hut laying eggs. Do not worry about that," said the ugly duckling. "I'm a boy duck. Then why are you still here?" said the tomcat. "Did you not hear what the old woman said?" "Get out of here, pretender!" clucked the hen. "Get out! Get out!" hissed the tomcat. The door was still a bit open. 
So our poor ugly duckling slipped out the door and back into the storm. No one ever wants me, said the ugly duckling with tears in his eyes. The storm ended. Soon he found a new lake. Looking into the water, the ugly duckling saw the reflection of a flock of large white birds flying. He looked overhead and could not believe what he saw there above him were the most beautiful birds he had ever seen their long white bodies and slender necks seemed to just glide through the sky he watched until the very last bird had winged its way out of the view he stayed at the lake all by himself and time passed the leaves of the trees turned deep red and gold and then the leaves fell to the ground winter came setting a blanket of white snow all over the cold wind and the dark clouds made the ugly duckling feel even more sad he had to go into the cold cold lake to fish but it was getting harder to swim the lake was turning to ice one day all he could do was to paddle the water to keep it from freezing around him and trapping him in the lake. I'm so tired. He said, paddling with all his might. The ice got thicker and drew closer to him. In a moment, two giant hands swept him up. You poor thing, said the farmer. He held the ugly duckling close to his thick wool jacket and took the bird to his home. Never was a warm fireplace more welcome. For the rest of the winter, the farmer cared for the ugly duckling. Then spring came. Tips of green covered the trees. Short, bright flowers popped up from the ground. It is time for you to go to the lake to swim again, as you were born to do said the farmer. He took the duckling back to the lake where he had found him and set him with care on the water. Gosh, I feel strong, said the young bird, flapping his wings. Why, I never felt as strong as I do right now. He heard quite splashing sounds behind him and turned around. A flock of those same beautiful birds he had seen in the sky before landed behind him on the water. Do not worry, he said to them, holding out one wing. I will go now. I will not make trouble for you. A big fat tear rolled down his cheek. He turned to go away. When he opened his eyes, he saw a reflection in the water of one of those beautiful white birds. Why was it so close to him? He jumped back and the reflection jumped back too. What is this? He said. He stretched his neck and the reflection of the beautiful bird stretched its neck too. Why are you going so soon? Said one of the beautiful birds. Stay here with us. Said another. We'll be great friends. Then the bird who used to be the ugly duckling knew what had happened. He was no longer an ugly grey bird that wobbled when it walked. He was now a beautiful white swan. At one moment, all the swans flapped their wings and took off into the sky. Come with us. One of them called back. Take the lead. So he flapped his wings fast and took his place in front of the whole flock. All his new friends flapped their wings behind him. He said, gliding and dipping through the sky as he flew on. Who is an ugly duckling now? Surely not me. Once upon a time, there lived an evil ogre. 
He was extremely dangerous and had special powers of shape shifting into animals. He used to change into a dangerous animal and used to hunt people from the nearby village for his meal. People of that village were scared for their lives. No one knew where he lived or where he comes from except one cat named Puss from the village. Puss was a dear pet of an old miller from the same village. The miller had three sons. The two elder brothers were very lazy and left most of the hard work to the youngest. When the father died, all he owned was divided between his sons. The mill he left to the eldest son, the donkey to the second, and to the youngest he left his dear cat Puss. The elder brothers left the youngest on his own and so he was very unhappy. He said, Alas, this cat is of no use to me and I am too poor even to feed her. While he was sitting and thinking what he should do to get his bread and butter, Puss jumped and said, Don't worry master, I'll get your doing for you. The miller's son could not believe on his eyes and rubbing it in surprise, he said, You can talk. Your father left me to you as I can do many other things if you do what I tell you to do. What can I do? Only buy me a hat, a pair of boots and a large bag. Leave the rest on me. The miller's son spent his last pennies and gave him a very smart hat with a feather in it, a pair of brown colored boots and a nice large bag. The cat then put on his pair of boots and his hat and then took his bag and at once headed towards the jungle. It was a rare thing to see and so Miller's son called him Puss in Boots. Puss picked some carrots from the farm on his way to the forest and put them in the bag. Not very far from the mill there was a rabbit warren where Puss put that bag down with its mouth wide open. He then hid himself into the bushes. As the little greedy rabbit sniffed the fresh carrots and jumped into the bag to eat, Puss bounced on the bag and pulled the string of the bag. Puss carried the bag with a fat rabbit in it on his shoulder and came to the king's palace. He bowed before the king and said, Your Majesty, I have a present for you from the estate of my master. The Prince of Calabas. Taking a fine rabbit out of his bag, he said, My master has sent this rabbit for you with his respects. The king accepted the present. In the days that followed, Puss in the Boot regularly visited the king, carrying hares, partridges and turkeys and presenting them all to the king in the name of Prince of Carabas. Finally, King told Puss, Tell your master that I am pleased to accept his gifts. One day, Puss heard at the palace that the king and his princess daughter were planning to drive beside the river bank. He raced home to his master and told him about his visits to the king's palace. He then said to him, If you'll follow my advice, your fortune is made. I want you to go and swim in the river. If anyone asks your name, you have to say that you are the Prince of Carabas and leave the rest to me. The miller's son did what the cat advised him to. And while he was in the water, Puss took away all his clothes and hid them in the bushes. As the king's carriage arrived, Puss ran towards them shouting, Help! Help! Help my master, the Prince of Carabas! Hearing the shouts, the king ordered the carriage to stop and asked what the matter was. Bowing before the king, said Puss, Oh, your majesty, my master was bathing and someone has stolen his clothes. He will catch the clams and be drowned. 
The king ordered his servant to ride back to the palace and get one of the best suits for the prince. When the miller's son put on the royal suit, he looked just like a prince. This is my master, your majesty, the prince of Carabas. Puss graciously introduced the miller's son to the king and the princess. Though miller's son was poor, but he looked as handsome and smart as a prince for anyone to doubt about. The king invited him to sit in his couch and said he would drive him home. Puss told the couchman where to go and ran ahead of the carriage across the field. On his way, Puss met some haymakers. He warned them. If the king asks you to whom does these fields belong, say it belongs to the prince of Carabas. If you don't say so, the king's men will cut you into pieces. The haymakers were so frightened that they promised to obey the cat. Puss warned everybody who met him on the way. The king, who passed by after some time, wished to know, and so he asked. To whom do these fine fields belong to? The haymakers answered. To the prince of Carabas. King was very pleased and turning to the miller's son, he said, You have a fine property. Running ahead, the clever cat reached the huge castle where he knew the ogre lived. Though terrified, he entered the castle boldly and said, Oh, great ogre, I'm a great admirer of your paws. The ogre was pleased to hear it. Puss further said, Dear me, I would like to see your ogre ship. Yes, of course, replied the ogre in full pride. In a flash, the ogre turned himself into a lion and roared loudly. It is amazing that you can become as big as a lion. But can you become a small creature such as a mouse as well? Puss asked the ogre bravely. Ha ha ha! It's not a problem at all," said the vain ogre, and he changed himself into a little mouse. Puss sprang upon the tiny mouse and gobbled him on the spot. At that very moment, the king's coach stopped at the ogre's castle. Puss came out and, bowing very low, he said, "Welcome, your Majesty, to the castle of the Prince of Cadabas." The king, the prince, and the miller's son went inside the castle with Puss and sat down to a great feast. The king was very pleased with the miller's son and thought him such a good match for the princess. He turned to the miller's son, saying, Will you marry my daughter? Your majesty, it's my pleasure to marry such a beautiful princess. Soon the miller's son and the princess got married and lived together happily in the castle. Puss in the Boots became a great lord and lived in comfort for the rest of his days and never ran after the mice anymore. Once upon a time, there was a little red hen that lived in a house on a farm all by herself. To keep her house neat and clean and collect the food for herself, she worked really hard throughout the day. Not very far from the hen's house, there lived a sly fox and his wife in a cave. The fox was very cunning and was always on a hunt to impress his wife with the tasty meals. They had their eyes on the little red hen. The sly fox, as and when, saw the hen, thought, This red hen must be very tender. I would love to gift her to my wife. And we would love to cook her in our big pot. So, one fine day, the fox picked up his back and said to his wife, I am going to catch the little red hen and we shall have her for our dinner tonight. You should prepare for it and have the big pot boiling till I'm back. 
Saying this, the fox left to the place where the little red hen had her house. Fox's wife was very happy and she started to prepare the spices and kept the big pot on fire to boil the water. Meanwhile, little red hen came out of her house to collect seed from the farm for her dinner. She did not see the sly fox who was hidden behind the tree. As soon as the red hen was out of sight, the fox who was waiting for a chance immediately slipped into the hen's house. He planned everything on how to catch the red hen when she returns. After some time, the little red hen returned with the basket of seeds for her dinner, went inside her house and locked the door behind. As soon as the fox saw that there was no way for her to run away, he pounced on her with a big bag wide open to catch her. The little red hen was terribly frightened. She dropped her basket full of seeds and flew up to the wooden beam across the ceiling. Then catching her breath back, she told to the fox, Oh, you slay fox, what are you doing inside my house? You will not be able to catch me how hard you try. How long do you think you can keep hanging there? Said the fox. Though he knew it would not be easy for him to catch the hen now, the hen was too smart, too fast and too careful. The fox was smart too and thought for a moment. Immediately he was enlightened with an idea and said, I'm going to catch you and have you for the dinner tonight. I can't upset my wife. He stood right under the little red hen and started to run round and round and round and round as if he was trying to catch his own tail. Little red hen was watching this from above and thought, He will go away when he is tired. The fox trailed round faster and faster, chasing his own tail. The hen intently kept watching the fox from the beam and did not understand what was the fox up to. Poor little red hen soon got so dizzy watching him from the above that she could not keep her balance on the beam anymore. She fell down into the sly fox's big bag. The fox slung the bag over his shoulder and started to walk towards his cave. He was very happy and started to imagine how tasty the hen would be. He walked and walked but he was very tired to take even a step further. The exercise at the hen's house trained him to walk back to his own cave. He thought, It seems there is still time for a nightfall. I can have some rest. So he kept the bag aside and leaned on the rock for some time. Soon he was fast asleep. The little red hen soon came back to her senses. She somehow managed to open the bag and poked her head out. She was surprised to see the fox sleeping. The hen struggled out of the bag and picked up few heavy stones and quickly put them inside the bag. Then she hauled back home as fast as her legs could carry her. Not knowing what happened, when the fox was asleep, he slung the bag again on his shoulder and walked towards his cave. As soon as his wife saw him, she called out, Do you have the little red hen? Yes, yes. Is the water boiling hot? Asked the fox to which his wife nodded licking her lips. He dipped the bag into the big pot of water. The stones fell splashing the boiling hot water over them and both of them died. The little red hen did not see the cunning sly fox again and lived happily in peace ever after.
Once upon a time, a girl who wore red color riding hood was bringing treats for her grandmother. She loved that riding hood so much that she was named as Little Red Riding Hood. La 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 la. Singing, she went through the jungle, enjoying her path with beautiful flowers, birds, and butterflies. At a particular point, she got distracted by beautiful-looking, colorful flower. She thought, "Won't my mom be happy if I add those beautiful flowers with this wine, cake, and bread?" But my mom told me to head straight to the grandmother's house and not get distracted or talk to strangers. Collecting flowers won't take much time. Ignoring her mother's sign, she went off the path and started collecting flowers. While collecting flowers, she caught a sight of berries ahead in the jungle. Her stomach growled. Oh, I have hunger. I'm sure my mother won't mind if I have a small feast of those berries. Her face lightens up and she further adds, "And I can take some for granny too." Oh, she will love me for that. She went more deep into the forest collecting those berries when suddenly bush behind her makes noise. Suddenly a big bad wolf approached her. She was little scared to see the wolf. What are you doing out here, little girl? The wolf asked in a voice as friendly as he could. I'm on my way to see my granny, who lives through the forest near the brook. She is all alone, so I'm going to visit her. Little Red Riding Hood replied graciously. By the way, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. I'll head on first and let your grandmother know that you are on your way so that you can continue picking up these berries. The wolf said cunningly, "Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Wolf. Also, tell her I'm getting good treat for her. She will be very happy." The wolf thought, "The day seems good today. I can gulp down an old woman which will fulfill my hunger." and then a little girl as a desert the wolf ran quickly towards grandmother's house little red riding hood went ahead to collect more berries when she soon realized that she had lost her way i think i have lost my way how will i go to granny or back to my home now feeling sad she sat on the foot of a tree and started to cry I should have not ignored my mother's warning. While she was crying, a hunter was passing by who heard her crying and followed the sound and reached her. What are you doing out here, little girl? I'm on my way to see my granny who lives through the forest near the brook, but I have lost my way. This forest is a dangerous place to be. There are some wild animals too. Come let me help you reach your grandmother's house safely. Wild animals? But they seem to be good. I met one of them, Mr. Wolf. The cunning wicked wolf? I have been looking for him since a while now. Where is he? He left to inform my granny that I am on my way with treats for her and I will be there soon. Oh little girl, we should head fast to your grandmother's place. She might be in danger. Little Red Riding Hood realized what a mistake she had done by talking to the big bad wolf. She walked quickly with the hunter as she was extremely worried for her grandmother's safety. Soon enough, they reached the grandmother's house. She knocked the door and heard her voice from inside. Who is it? I'm Little Red Riding Hood, Granny. I came to meet you and got some treats for you. Oh, please come in, my dear. The door is open. The hunter said, "You should go and meet your grandmother while I guard your house from that wolf." She went inside the house and saw Granny in the bed, but it was the wolf who had already got down Granny and disguised himself, laid down in the bed. Looking so different and weird to Little Red Riding Hood, 
she asked, Granny, why are your eyes so big? So that I can see you better, my sweetheart. And why are your ears so big, Granny? So that I can hear you better, my dear. And why is your nose so big then? So that I can smell you better, my darling. She's a pointed big teeth and shivering, she asked. Why is your teeth so big and pointed? At once, the wolf jumped out of the bed towards her. So that I can chew you better, my tasty desert. She shouted as loud as she could and at once the hunter blasted in and killed the wolf. He then cut the wolf's stomach and saved the grandmother too. Little Red Riding Hood was so happy to see her granny back again. They both hugged each other and then she turned towards the hunter and said, Thank you so much, uncle. Please join us for this lovely treat. Treat? Wow! Yes, I will. Yes, I will. They all laughed and enjoyed the cake, bread, berries and wine together. Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once, there was a pretty little girl who was called Goldilocks because her head was covered in golden curls. She liked to walk by herself in the woods and when she was hungry, she would eat the wild strawberries there and when she was tired, she would sleep on the dry moss. Three bears lived in the woods. Father Bear, who was big and had a deep voice and Mother Bear, who was smaller and rounder and had a middling deep voice and a baby bear who was like a ball of fur and had a squeaky voice. Because they were all such different sizes, each of them had his own chair, own bed and own porridge bowl. Every evening, mother bear used to put the porridge to soak in the saucepan on the oven and every morning she boiled it up and poured it into the three bowls for the bear's breakfast. On the morning that this story happened, the sun was shining in the window and the birds were singing outside and Father Bear and Baby Bear were splashing around in the stream behind the house, having their morning wash. Mother Bear called to them that breakfast was ready and then they sat down in front of their bowls of steaming hot porridge. Oh, my porridge is too hot! exclaimed the father bear in his deep, gruff voice. Oh, my porridge is too hot, the mother bear said in a softer voice. Oh, my porridge is too hot, the baby bear said in his squeaky voice. So they all decided to go out for a walk until their porridge had cooled down. No sooner had they left their cottage than Goldilocks came along. She was hungry and tired because she had been walking for a long time and she decided to stop for a while at this strange little cottage. She looked in through the window and saw a well scrubbed wooden table with three bowls of porridge laid out on it and around it three chairs to sit on. Is anybody home? She called out but nobody answered her. The bears had left the door ajar. So Goldilocks walked through the door into the bear's living room. Since there was no one there, she sat down in Father Bear's chair to rest. But it was too big for her and her feet could not even reach the ground. So she climbed on onto the Mother Bear's chair and wriggled around it to get comfortable. In the end, she decided that it was too big for her too. And so she hopped off and sat down in Baby Bear's chair, which broke because it was too small. Goldilocks walked around the table again and the smell of porridge made her hungry. She dipped a spoon into Father Bear's bowl, but the porridge in it was too hot, so she dropped it again. 
then she tried some from the mother bear's bowl, but that was too cold. The porridge in the baby bear's bowl was just right, and Goldilocks ate it all up. By now, she was very sleepy, and when she caught sight of a large bed in the next room, she decided that she would have a short rest before returning home. So she climbed up into the father bear's bed, but when she lay down on it, it was so big that she felt quite uncomfortable. So she climbed off it quickly and went to lie in the mother bear's bed. But that one was so soft that she still felt quite uncomfortable. So she scrambled out of it again quickly. Then she tried baby bear's bed, which was so comfortable that she immediately fell into fast sleep. Soon afterwards, the three bears returned. Somebody has been eating my porridge. Father bear thundered when he saw the wooden spoon in it. Somebody's been eating my porridge. The mother bear cried when she saw her bowl. Somebody's been eating my porridge. I have finished it all up. The baby bear wailed and burst into tears. Then father bear said, "Somebody has been sitting in my chair." And then the mother bear said. Somebody's been sitting in my chair too, and the baby bear squeaked. Somebody's been sitting in my chair and has broken it all to pieces. <laughs> Then the three bears began to look around for what else they could find. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. The father bear growled. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed too, said the mother bear. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed, and here she is right now. The baby bear cried. At that, Goldilocks woke up and opened her eyes. When she saw the three bears looking down at her, she got such a fright that she jumped off the bed and ran out of the house as fast as she could. She ran all the way home and never went into the woods again. Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a poor woman who lived in a humble cottage in the countryside with her only son, whose name was Jack. They owned a cow that gave more milk than any other cow in the neighborhood, and they made butter and cheese with the extra milk and sold it at the market nearby. But one day. The cow went dry, and there was no milk to make butter and cheese. There was not even a milk for them to drink. They ate less every day, but before long, they had almost nothing left to eat and no money to buy food. Jack was still too young to work, and his mother had fallen ill. Jack's mother called him to her bedside. I am too. Go out myself, Jack. So you must take the cow to the market and sell there for as much money as you can. Yes, mother. Jack liked going to market, but he was sad that they would have to sell the cow. He set out, walking slowly, and had gone about half the way. When an old man stopped him, "Do you want to sell that cow? I will buy her from you in exchange of this magic beans." The beans, which were all different colors, were very beautiful, and the old man had said they were magic. So Jack gave him the cow and ran home with the beans. "Look, mother, what I have got!" he cried as he hurried into her room. But his mother was furious when she saw that he had come home without any money for the cow. What? You've sold our good cow for these worthless beans? And she threw them out of the window. That evening, Jack and his mother ate their last crust of bread and went to bed 
very sadly for they knew that there was nothing left for breakfast jack woke up early next morning still hungry he was so hungry in fact that he jumped out of bed and went into the garden to look for something to eat to his amazement he saw that the magic beans had grown into a huge plant that stretched right up over the roof and disappeared into the sky the stems of the plant were so thickly twisted that he could climb up them as if they were the rungs of a ladder he began to pull himself up higher and higher and higher at last he reached the top of the bean stalk in front of him was a white road which led to a great castle far in the distance there was no one to be seen so he started to walk along the road maybe someone at the castle would give him something to eat in any case it would certainly be an adventure he was hot and tired and hungrier than ever by the time he reached the castle its great gate was shut but jack knocked on it loudly after a while it was opened by a huge ugly old woman who had only one eye in the middle of her forehead oh she cried i need a boy just like you to clean out the floors for me every day come in quickly come in and hide or my husband will see you and eat you up frightened jack hurried inside at once and told the giantess he would become her servant in exchange for something to eat she gave him a piece of bread and a glass of buttermilk but while he was drinking it in the castle walls began to shake with a heavy tread and jack could hear the giant coming closer quick quick hide behind the cupboard whispered the giantess and jack slipped out of sight as the giant stamped into the room shouting I smell the blood of an Englishman. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Fee fee fo fo. Nonsense! It's only a nice young elephant that I cooked for your breakfast. Sit down and eat it while it's hot. So the giant sat down, ate his breakfast. and forgot all about the englishman who stood watching him from behind the cupboard when he had finished he called out wife mm. bring me my magic hen i want to see some new golden eggs <laughs> jack could hardly believe his eyes when he saw what happened next the giantess brought in a little brown hen and put it on the table in front of her husband hey you lay Lay the giant commanded and plop 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 she immediately laid one two and three golden eggs the giant scooped the eggs into his pocket then he settled back in a chair and soon was snoring so loudly that the castle walls shook with the noise jack crept out from behind the curtain snatched up the magic cane and ran out of the castle as fast as his legs would carry him with the hen tucked under his arm he climbed quickly down the beanstalk and hurried into the cottage up to his mother's room she was very happy to see him again she cried with joy and then she cried some more because now they would have as many golden eggs as they wanted and never be poor again But Jack soon began to long for another adventure. So one morning, he set out again up the beanstalk, higher, 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 until he reached the top. This time, he has dyed his hair black, and the giantess did not recognize him. Ha! Oh, you are just the boy to help me clean out the chicken. Run and chase the mice away. Hurry inside. For my husband sees you he will show
Once upon a time, very long ago, an old couple lived in a village far away in a little cottage. The old woman was very fond of cooking and making special treats every day. One day, she read in her recipe book how to bake a gingerbread. She decided to make one. To enhance her treat, she made a figure out from the dough. Figure of a boy. She made two eyes on it with vanilla cream and lips with strawberry cream. She also dressed it with different colors and called it gingerbread boy. She then put the gingerbread boy into the oven to bake it. It was only after a few minutes when she heard voices coming from the oven. Let me out! Please let me out! It's too hot in here! Please let me out! Someone seemed to be saying. Who could it be? She thought and opened the oven door. As soon as she opened the door of the oven, Gingerbread Boy jumped out and started running. The old couple could not believe on their eyes. Before they could realize anything, the Gingerbread Boy reached the road outside. They too ran behind the Gingerbread Boy. Both of them shouted, Stop, Stop little, little Gingerbread, gingerbread boy. boy! We, we want, want to, to eat, eat you! you. Stop. Stop! They were panting as they ran. They ran a little while but could not catch him. He was too fast for them. The gingerbread boy had gone only a little distance when he crossed the cow in the farm. The cow called for him. Stop little boy, stop. You look so delicious. I want to eat you. But the gingerbread boy didn't give a heed. He did not stop running. He saw a cow running after him. The cow tried hard but could not catch him. He was too fast for the cow too. The gingerbread boy had not gone very far when he met a horse. I'm very hungry and you look so yummy. I must eat you. Stop! Said the horse running after the gingerbread boy. When Gingerbread Boy saw the horse running behind him, he started running faster. The horse did not want the Gingerbread Boy to run away. On the other hand, Gingerbread Boy ran as fast as he could to be escaped. No doubt, the Gingerbread Boy had escaped the attack of an old couple and the cow successfully. He was sure to escape the horse's attack too. It was the question of his life. So he ran faster than the hungry horse. Soon he ran out of the reach of the horse too. The little gingerbread boy was sure that nobody could catch him now. As he was running through the forest, a sly old fox saw him. The gingerbread boy would make a good supper. The fox thought and called. Hey little boy, stop! I want to talk to you! But the gingerbread boy knew what the cunning fox was up to. So he did not stop and continued running. The fox too gave in a hot chase. Not bothered, the ginger boy sang as he ran. He was too fast for the fox too. But the fox did not give up. He too continued his chase of gingerbread boy with a watering mouth. He had already decided to catch and eat gingerbread boy by hook or crook. Soon the gingerbread boy reached the river bank. He did not know how to swim. Moreover, he was afraid that if he goes into the water, he would get dissolved and die. He found himself in a fix. What should I do now? He said to himself as he stood on the rock on the bank of the river, Meanwhile, Fox to reach the riverbank and decided to take advantage of the problem. The fox went up to the gingerbread boy and said, Don't worry, I'll take you across the river. You just jump on my tail. I know how to swim. The fox told the gingerbread boy very innocently. The gingerbread boy now believed every word of the clever fox. He jumped onto his tail. Midway in the river, the fox said, 
I cannot hold you on my tail. You would be safer if you come onto my back. The gingerbread boy had no choice. He did as the fox told him to do. He knew fox was planning something ugly in his mind. But he did not let the fox know about his suspicion. You are too heavy for my back too. The fox told him after he swam a little more distance. Why don't you jump onto my head? Why not? Whatever you say. And the gingerbread boy jumped onto fox's head being very cautious. After some time the fox again said, It would be easier for me to carry you on my nose. We would soon be on the other side of the river. Then you would be free to go wherever you want to go. As soon as the fox reached the other end of the river, he tossed the gingerbread boy high up and the fox was ready with an open mouth and closed eyes to gobble him up in no time. But nothing came down. When he opened his eyes, he saw gingerbread boy on the tree above saying, Better luck next time you cunning sly old fox. This time eat the dust. Ha 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 ha.